Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm your host D-Day bringing you Let's Play Enigmatica 6 Expert Mode. One thing that's super important to mention is that this pack right now is in pre-alpha phase. But I was assured by one of the pack developers that most of the beginning content is finished. So be sure to smash like to keep the series going and subscribe so that you can find the channel again. And if you're ready, then let's play with D-Day. Alright, so today what we're going to be working on is create. Now that we have the induction smelter going, we can make the andesite alloys, which uh, are required for almost everything in create. Uh, we're going to be doing the vertical windmill that I enjoy. It looks really cool. Uh, vertical axis windmill, to be specific. That's going to be most of our stress units, most of our power in this mod. I'm going to skip the water wheels completely. Uh, we'll go down this way for the windmill, and we'll come over here for the mechanical mixer and the blaze burner so that we can do heated, uh, heated mixing with the blaze burner. Uh, that's going to require us to go to the nether, so I'm also going to make my goofy little contraption, my retractable nether portal. Uh, yeah, the adjustable chain gear shift, so we'll knock out some cool stuff and create. The first thing I want to do, of course, is open up the gate so that we can get the wrench. Then let's see, this is going to be schematics. Modular contraptions. We can build a tree farm, an automated tree farm over here. We can also make an automated farm for plants with the plow. Or no, with the mechanical harvester which I already have a really good idea of what I want to do. I want to make automated mechanical harvester or crops and then hook that into Ars Nouveau or uh, generating, I believe, aura or mana, one of the two, because the create is going to be harvesting the crops and then every time a crop grows, we'll earn the fuel source for Ars Nouveau. So let's see, rotational force. We also get the goggles, so we'll be able to see the stress units that everything is going to make. All right, the windmill. Windmill bearing, an altered recipe with shaft, an andesite alloy. And andesite alloy does, uh, has an explosion craft. Of course, it comes from the clockwork B, but then yeah, we can make it here. Zinc nuggets and andesite in the induction smelter to make the andesite alloys. That's how I've been making them. Oh, we need sticky pistons, so we do have sky slime now because of the bee. And uh, we can make another piston now that we can cast out, let's see, two of them with a gold rod. If we use gold, yeah, we can make two pistons. So let's see if we can cast out some gold real quick. Over here, this is actually pretty hilarious. If you can see, there's a whole lot of maggots inside my smeltery that can't uh, be smelted. So this has more or less become a, uh, a bug zapper. All of the flies have been coming into the smeltery and, and croaking and leaving maggots behind. So that's kind of gross, but also kind of funny. Uh, oh yeah, I alloyed brass in here as well. Let's see. I do need some gold, we decided. So let's grab some gold and we can do that. Also, we have some rice down here. All right, and I've been making uh, cooked rice with the cooking pot. So let's see, gold, I don't think we have any nuggets. So let's just go ahead and toss this, these 14 in there. And uh, let's go with sticky pistons. We're going to need lime balls. We're also going to need smooth stone, redstone, planks, and gold ingots. So let's go ahead and we'll do that. Redstone and smooth stone. There we go. And let's go ahead and sleep, just so that the video is a little brighter for you guys. Alright, does gold mix with anything in here? 
That's going to be the big bummer. Let's go ahead and get rid of the maggots. So many. Couple more. All right. Gold. I believe it mixed. Oh, it mixed into molten rose gold. Bummer. We have one ingot of gold. Let's see. Let's hope that uh, it's only one ingot. Yeah, it's only one ingot. <laughs> Lucky. We only need one for right now. All right. And piston. We need oh, planks. Two planks. And piston, sticky piston. We're going to need a turntable, which is a slab and shaft. So over here, let me grab the andesite alloy that we have. Yep, andesite alloy. Also, I ran gravel through the induction smelter, and uh, that gave us the slag that we need. So let's also, let's just run it through the redstone furnace, put the slag inside the redstone furnace so that we could get ourselves some rock wool, which we're going to need for the vertical windmill. All right, we need a plank, right? Let's go one, two, three. And slab. There we go. Andesite alloy. Can make eight shaft. So the turntable. And the windmill bearing. There we go. Got that guy. We need a radial chassis, which requires... Oh, those require logs. So let's go ahead and grab some wooden logs. I don't think... I think I do. Oh, I do. One, two, three. Whoops. So I'm trying to think, what am I going to use the uh, the rose gold for? So the reason why I wanted rock wool was because to make these sails, we're going to need rock wool. It accepts any thermal rock wool and sail frames, which require andesite alloy. So let's see. 8, 16, 24. 3, 6, 12. I need 12. Oh, let's see. We need a lot of sticks for this. And I don't think I can make 12 in total. 7. 7. We need 5 more. So let's go ahead and make ourselves some more sticks. Easiest way, of course, is to take the logs in here. There we go. Take two stacks. And let's go. We need another five. All right. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. And let's go ahead and grab our rock wool that we are now making in the induction smelter. And by induction smelter, I mean redstone furnace. There's our rock, rock wool. And that 12, 12. 8, 16, 24. 3, 6, 12. Yeah, we need 12 of these guys. So that's all of the ones that I wanted to use. The rock wool, I guess we could use rock wool instead of regular wool. I believe it looks exactly the same. So where I want to build this, let's see. I believe we need one of the quest rewards. That's true. The windmill gives us super glue. That's what I needed. I needed that as a quest reward. We also get an epic box. Is that all of the rewards so far? 16 shaft. Okay. Nick needs 16 shaft for us. I believe we can need to make we need to hold more than 16 yeah rare and kelp cool so we do get kelp as a quest reward where inventory is full of course put the piston and the sticks up the rice oh we can put the goggles on 
Bloop. We have our wrench. Put the sticks up. There we go. All right, so I want to go up onto the roof. And I already have an area mapped out where I want. So let's see, we need to put down the windmill bearing. Let me check this guy out for a second. All right, so the, to be able to move the stress units, we'll make these cogwheels as well. We need buttons, and I believe we need uh, planks and buttons. Okay, so we need a bunch of buttons. Let's go ahead and go ham on buttons. All right, and let's make some small cogs and some large cogs, right? We need four more. Four. And large cogs. Oh, wait. Does it want eight for the quest? It needs four for the quest. Okay. Because I want to also unlock the quest while we're doing gearbox. And aside casing. Planks, logs. Let's grab some more planks. Let's also grab two more of these guys for the quest, and then andesite casing, and then gearbox. And then gearbox, we need to make this guy a vertical gearbox. There we go. The andesite age. All right. So down here, I kind of want the stress units to go this way. There we go. So it's, ta it's attached to the bottom of this guy. And now we need to hop up top. Let's grab one piece of dirt for right now. All right, one, two, one, two, one, two. Yeah, this is where I wanted it. So this side is already sticky. We're gonna use rock wool, eight of them. And we're gonna use super glue. Oh, I don't think I can offhand this. So the first one should be sticky. Super glue, rock wool. All right, that's eight. All right, that's rock wool. And let's see, does this turn? Yeah, this turns. So that's eight pieces of rock wool. And uh, rock wool does count. That's one thing I was worried about. I knew wool counted, but I was worried rock wool was not going to count, but it does. 512 stress units by itself. Uh, this is gonna be the part where I wish I had real scaffolding. All right. So let's move these sails now. Nope, I knew it was going to do something weird. There we go. Now we can do this. Move over to the side. There we go. Up. We're going to go three. Kind of cool that they added this arrow. All right, and our last one here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the pickle weed, turn it into cyan dye. We per turn the purple um, amaranth into purple dye. And go make a design on it. All right, I can't reach higher, so I'm going to do that in a little bit. And we're going to alternate. All right, so this bad boy is running at 6,656 stress units. Uh, I can't really tell, with even with the goggles, what the rotations are, but I know that the more sails you attach, the faster it rotates. So I'm happy with this. This is my design on a vertical axis. Wind turbine, the Vought. Uh, we have shaft over here that I tagged with andesite casing. It turns the shaft into uh, an andesite encased shaft. And it doesn't use the andesite. That's what I like about it. Just because I'm worried that the bees can squeeze through. I'm not sure if that counts as a full block. But here we're going to have to put down another vertical 
windmill so that we can angle the stress units down from this point and then we'll start working create stuff on this wall here let's see in the quest book where we're at next in the quest book create yeah we did the andesite casing the cogwheels Oop, no i don't want to pin that in the gearbox all right so we have cool stuff like the mechanical belts that we can work with now we can do the adjustable chain gear shift to go towards the rotation speed controller. All that is good. We need to do crafting. So let's do this one. Okay, Farmer's Delight. The millstone. We can make a millstone, which seems easy enough. Copper gear. Let's grab some copper. Oh, neat. Powered latch. Analog levers. There's our copper gear. And what else did we need? Okay, we made sails, encased fan. We need the millstone. We need smooth stone slabs. I think I put those in here, yeah. Oops. There. We got the slabs, and we can make the millstone. All right, so we have a millstone now. Which, uh, honestly, since we have Tinker Smeltery, and that does our doubling, we're not going to need the millstone. The next quest was going to be, yeah, the encased fan, but we can go down towards the mechanical press. And the only reason really why I'm making these is because I want uh, the progression, the quest progression. Whisk, one, two, three, four, five plates. I think we have extra iron plates, though. All right, so a propeller... We can make the encased fan since it's one of the recipes or in the quest book. We can make a block of iron and we can make more cogwheels to make the mechanical press. There we go. And then the mechanical mixer requires a whisk and mechanical mixer. Now the press and the millstone aren't going to be important. Let's put these guys up for right now. A whisk. The mechanical mixer needs the basin. So let's make the basin for it real quick. And then also, we can make the empty blaze burner. So we need iron bars. Let's just take these. Alright, and we need two iron plates so we can make the empty blaze burner. Cool. So now we are ready to head towards the nether so that we can fill up the empty blaze burner with a blaze. So now we're on our way towards the nether. All right, I don't... It appears that the mechanical mixer is not rotating with enough speed. So the, fa uh, the, the windmill isn't fast enough. We need a rotational speed controller to be able to speed this guy up. So let's detach that for just right now. Let's make, uh, let's turn this guy into a manual mixer for right now. I'm gonna head over here. And let's make the crank. All right, this way we'll be able to hand crank this bad boy. There we go. Yeah. We can spin it this way. Underneath this, let's go. This is where the blaze burner is going to go. Let's also spread this apart. We're going to put the blaze burner right here. We're going to have to take that with us to the nether. So I would say let's go ahead and make a nether portal right around here. All right, so I found out the hard way that obsidian is no longer being able to be moved by the rope pulley. So I guess uh, updating uh, create to the newest setting, now obsidian can't be moved. So I can't make my retractable nether portal. Big bummer. So I decided to make a retractable gate instead. Uh, so now I have a gate in front of the nether portal that retracts. I'm kind of happy about that. And now we can have the nether portal behind it. So I'm not sure if that is enough room for pigmen to be able to come through, 
but they're not going to be walking around and bugging us. So I'm happy with at least a retractable gate for the nether portal. And the stage that we're at right now in the book, let's see, create. Oh, we can accept all of that. Analog lever, magma block. I guess we got a quest reward. Uh, mechanical belt, so we auto-completed that quest as well. Let's see, yeah. 16 mechanical belts. That's cool. Magma blocks. So our next step, what we need to do is we need to head to the nether to uh, right-click a blaze with the empty blaze burner. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a cardboard box on one of the blaze spawners that we find, and I'm going to bring it with us to the overworld. This is one of the first things I ever did in FTB Continuum. Uh, I moved the blaze spawner to the overworld, made a water 9x9 manual mob farm so that I could gather the blaze rods required to make blaze hoppers in FTB Continuum. We got a glowstone bee. Hey, let's go ahead and grab the bees while we're here. Yeah! Sneaky. It's a ninja bee. He's gone. Okay. Alright, so it took forever to be able to find the nether fortress. And then even when I found the nether fortress, it took forever for me to find a blaze spawner. So what we got now is our empty blaze burner. What we need to do is right click one of the blazes. So let's see if we can put a cardboard box on the spawner first. There we go. Uh. That should keep them from spawning. Also, I have some cooked rice. Whoa, that guy came to visit. So we right clicked him, now we have a blaze burner that's full. Uh, if we can grab the uh, spawner now, we should have everything we need from the nether. There's a lot of these guys here. Oh, how did you hit me? This is not working. Alright, so we're back from the nether, and I went ahead and I switched out the pillager spawner with the blaze spawner that we have. And as long as we have one ingot of molten fluid inside, whenever the blazes are spawned, they'll start taking damage. And when they take damage, they spill out blazing blood into these Tinker Smeltery. So what I've been doing for right now until we get filters going is uh, I've been putting down buckets, making sure blazing blood is at the bottom and filling the buckets this way. The whole reason why I wanted to do this was uh, now we have a fuel source. We can use the blazing blood to power our uh, Tinker Smeltery at 1500 degrees now. So it's an unending supply of fuel for our smeltery. So what I want to do next is uh, let's focus in on some B mutations. All right, so we'll free the hellish zombie here and the ICB here. Oh, and what I just realized is that the hellish zombie requires a mushroom to pollinate. So what we're going to do is we're going to let these bees fly around in here. This is the mutation room. When the hellish zombie pollinates and flies over the ICB, it will turn the ICB into the quartz bee. That's how the bee mutations will work. Entity mutation. Pollinated hellish flies over an ICB, turns it into a quartz bee. So this is the only flower, and they'll have to move in a straight line. Hopefully they'll run on top of each other, but let me go get a mushroom real quick for the hellish zombie. I don't think I picked up any soul sand. Let's see, mushroom, mushroom. I 
gotta have a mushroom. Yellow shimmering. Let's grab the magenta. Let's also grab... We need... Bull. And we need seagrass. Shears. Let's put the mushroom down. He should like that. Let's go shear some seagrass. Seagrass. Alright, nine. Ten pieces of seagrass. That should be enough, right? For lapis. Alright, so there's the sooty bee. Let's free the water bee. We're gonna feed this guy a block of coal. And this guy's seagrass. And let's see. There we go. We made the lapis bee. And we'll let the lapis bee fly around here and grow up. There's the iron bee and there's the Invar bee. So we're going to replace the uh, Sandy bee and the Invar bee for right now. And let this Lapis bee grow up. Okay, so let's check and see how our bee mutation is going. Oh, there we go. We have our Quartz bee. So the ICB has been mutated into the Quartz bee. Come here, buddy. Got him. We got the quartz bee. Alright, diamond. The diamond bee is going to be the quartz bee and the lapis bee. So we need two blocks of quartz and we need a block of lapis. So let's see. We can scrape this. And in here, what do we have? We have the hellish zombie right now. So let's also, since we have the glowstone bee, use yeah let's grab another sooty bee and replace uh the two bees here for mutations with the sooty bee and the glowstone bee that we have we can drop the glowstone bee off now and then we just need to pick up the hellish zombie all right and i believe we can just pick up a sooty bee from right around here right yeah, there you go. Go ahead and put this guy in here. With the glowstone bee. Glowstone. Use. Yep, any flower. So they'll both use flowers. The city bee and the glowstone bee, and I just need to pick up the hellish zombie real quick. Alright, there's our lapis bee. Our lapis bee is grown up, so let's go ahead. There we go. And there we go. There's our diamond bee. Perfect. So now we have quartz, lapis, and diamond. We'll let the diamond bee grow up. We can do one more bee. We have another slimy bee. We use the diamond bee with a slimy bee. We can get the emerald bee. There we go. We have our blaze bee. We have another mutation down. Let's go ahead and this guy up. Or we could just let him float around in here. What does the blaze bee need? The blaze bee... Really? That is absolutely silly. 
<laughs> the blaze V to produce its honeycombs requires magma cake. Magma cream bucket, glowstone, chicken eggs, crimson roots. This is hilarious. Magma cream is, yeah. Blaze powder and slime balls. I have to make a cake. <laughs> Crimson roots. Glowstone dust. So I have to put a cake down for the blaze bee to produce its products. Alright, so there's our fully grown diamond bee. Let's put the slimy bee out. The diamond bee just now. There it is. There you go, and there you go. And now we have our emerald bee as well. So now we can make uh, diamonds and emeralds from the combs. Thank you so much for joining me today. Smash like to keep the series going and click on my dude here to subscribe for more modded Minecraft. If you want to see the full uninterrupted footage, you can go to my channel on Twitch at twitch.tv slash ddanicus. The VODs will be saved there.